So uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rajesh Nishtala. I'm one of the software engineers at Facebook. And today, I'm here to talk about McRouter. So what is McRouter? McRouter is a memcache protocol router for scaling memcached deployments. And more importantly, probably for all of you in the audience, is that we're very excited to announce that we're open sourcing this today. You might have seen this in the Facebook blog posted earlier today or the GitHub repos. That it's already up and it's available for download. So the purpose of this talk is to kind of give you a brief run through of what McRouter is and to motivate you to kind of go try it out for yourself. So before we get into the nitty gritty of what it exactly it is, let me give you a high level uh, view of the social graph. So here's a typical image that you might see on your mobile phone, right? So a standard picture with some comments, et cetera, et cetera. And on the right, we have what you would consider the social graph. So you have some people uh, associated with each other with their friend edges. The social graph actually contains more than just people and their connections. It contains objects. So for example, in this case, there's a post object. The post object has a photo attached to it. There's a comment object saying, how is the summit? The posts and comments have authorship. There are likes, right? That's pretty important. The post has location data. And the location data has GPS data. And I hope I'm able to convince you that these small pieces of data that we have to routinely fetch over and over are what makes caching important. And these pieces of data are stored in the caches. So the web servers will pull these data from the caches and then dynamically render what you finally see on the site. So caching in Facebook takes on two different forms. One is a demand fill look aside cache served by memcache. So in this model, we first try to get a key from, mem uh, from memcache. If it's there, we're done, great. If not, we'll go to the database, look it up, and then set the value in memcache for later. A second model that we use is a read-through, write-through cache that's used by the Tau system. So the web server will get an object. If the object is not there, it'll do the database lookup on behalf of the client. Both of these systems share one key aspect, which is that they have two orders of magnitude more reads than writes. What does that actually translate into? At Facebook, we see over 4 billion operations a second through our cache here. Right, so as you can imagine, that's a lot of small pieces of content we pull in. Next is Instagram. So Instagram uses the similar demand fill look aside cache that we talked about at Facebook, with one key exception. When Instagram first started using McRouter, they were in Amazon EC2. And they were using the public memcached instance. So this is probably a very applicable for a lot of you in the audience. So our McRouter instance does work in AWS. And oh, by the way, Instagram does over 100 million operations a second through their cache tier. So if it wasn't clear before, let me just state, all of Facebook's cache operations go through, uh, Facebook and Instagram's cache operations go through McRouter. So it is an interesting part of our infrastructure. As you can imagine, as sites continue to grow, cache does not go from being a neat little optimization on the site to becoming a performance requirement, right, or an important performance necessity. So in this case, web servers will talk to the cache layer, which then, in some fashion, will then uh, protect the databases from excessive read loads. However, that means that caches go from being this night little optimization to no longer being an optimization. And sites could become dependent on the cache. And the loss of cache could have adverse effects that, for any site that leverages cache. Right? So it's important for us to get the caching right. So what was this like before McRouter? Well, we had our PHP application logic. So we had a key value API with a bunch of different memcache clients. Um, we started throwing in some features into our PHP stack, like server pools, consistent hashing, in-cast congestion control. We tossed in even more features, right? The automatic failure detection, automatic reconfiguration, broadcast operations. As the site continued to grow, we tossed in yet more features, so replicated pools, cold cache warm-up, memcache leases. And finally, we did not forget about more, uh, monitoring. Right? So as you can imagine, this stack got pretty bloated pretty quickly. And oh, by the way, there are all these other types of services at Facebook, like C, C++ services, Java, Python. And they had to kind of fend for themselves. And the problem was inconsistent implementations here can lead to corrupt data. So this was obviously very bad. So enter McRouter. McRouter is a piece of middleware, middleware and memcache, it's a memcache protocol 
uh, router that manages client-to-cache communication. So it sits between the client and the cache and then does the uh, communication on its behalf. We present two modes of operation. One is a proxy mode in which it uh, presents just a simple server proxy, so it uh, presents a server interface for easy adoption, so it's kind of a drop-in replacement where you would talk to a memcache server, you can talk to a Mercator instead. The other is a, in, in, uh, an embedded mode for low latency, high performance. We use the latter inside Facebook. Now I'm just going to do a brief lightning tutorial of what's uh, the features in uh, Mercator. The important thing to note about all these features is they are motivated by the production requirements of Facebook and Instagram. So none of these features were added because for fun. They were added because they were out of need. And as a result, they are robust and production quality. So the first set of features, we have stuff like connection, uh, consistent hashing, connection pooling, server pools, automatic failover, cold cache warm-up, broadcast, replicated data sets, shadowing production traffic, composable routing. There's a lot of different features that Mercator has. I really encourage you to look at our blog post to find out the full breadth and de depth of all these features. Uh, the GitHub documentation has a lot of interesting stuff as well. But for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to focus in on just three of these features. One is connection pooling. So what are we talking about when we talk about connection pooling? As your infrastructure continues to grow, the, one of the problems that you face is that there would be too many inbound TCP connections into servers. Right? So how do we solve it? Well, let's set up a proxy on every, ser on every application server to share connections. So let's say that we have some memcache instances and some application server. And each application server has T application threads. If you did this the naive way, there would be order n times t connections into every memcache host. That's a lot. So what we do instead is we set up McRouter and run it as proxy so the application threads can share a connection. And that drops the number of connections from order n times t to order n. And if you don't believe this is important, just wait till the infrastructure scales up and it is, becomes a big deal. Next we talk about, we have support for heterogeneous workloads. So the problem that we're trying to solve here is that keys compete for memory space. If you have a uniform caching architecture, then different key characteristics, different keys and data sets will compete with each other and adversely interfere with each other. So what do we do? Let's just partition them up into different data sets. So Mercator has the, uh, Mercator is in the middle. It has, takes, the, looks at the first three letters of the key and say, well, this is an ABC key, so I'm gonna route it to the ABC pool. And so it takes, takes the key and routes it to a specific host that only serve ABC keys. Then we have the XYZ pool that does that for the XYZ keys. And finally, when there's no prefix match, we route to a generic wildcard pool. The next problem that we ad uh, addressed here at Facebook was uh, automatic failover. So in large-scale infrastructure, the problem is that networks and servers fail all the time. That's just the par for the course, right? So we have to be able to handle this in a robust way. So what's the solution? Well, let's try to fail the request to another host that can actually handle the traffic. So again, is talking to its normal place for this particular key. When it detects that the server is unavailable I have via timeout or server error or some sort of other error message, it will then redirect the request to another, uh, another failover target. And we send periodic probes to identify when the machine is back up. The periodic probes allow us to automatically bring everything back. So if in case of a network outage, it is as simple as waiting for the network engineering staff to reconnect the pipes and then everything is back as you'd expect. At Facebook, we leverage deletes to keep the caches consistent. And what McRouter does in this case is that it'll spool the deletes. So when you can't talk to a particular host, all deletes need to be logged to make sure that we can replay them again to ensure that the caches can be re, uh, made consistent again. So this is a very important uh, thing in a sites that leverage deletes for caches. So this evolutionary path of caches going from a neat little optimization on the side to becoming a production requirement is something that you'll see in many sites. Ca outages of the cache can cause downtime, so it's important to, that we work with them. Uh, mechanisms that McGrider provides are not Facebook specific. As I've told you, Instagram has adopted it. Um, and Instagram has adopted McGrider and EC2, which I'm hopefully will help me sell this product to you for a lot of people in the audience. Twitter, Twitter has developed temp proxy because they realized that they needed similar requirements. How many of you in the audience are on this trajectory? 
I know that there's at least one company that is, so to introduce how Mercado is used at Reddit, I'm happy to present Ricky Ramirez. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Ricky Ramirez, and I'm one of the operations engineers at Reddit. So first, let me tell you a little bit about Reddit's infrastructure. We're all in AWS. Uh, we automatically scale between 170 and about 300 servers daily. They're just going in and out all the time. Uh, those servers are backed by 73 backend cache nodes with totally uh, over one terabyte of memory. And the app code is complex and makes use of memcrash in fragile ways. And what I mean by that is the same problems that Facebook and Instagram ran into, when we ran into them, we, we did some code hacks, and they're kind of still there. And Reddit's a small company. In fact, we only have three operations engineers. So really, we don't have the time to go around and build a more robust solution. Uh, we're, we're always picking and choosing what we need to work on. So let me tell you about some of the pain points that we have. We're on AWS, and Amazon constantly introduces new instance types. We actually haven't been able to use these instance types because it takes so long for us to, to test them. We have to kick a new cache server, roll it into the cluster, and then oftentimes there will be some performance issue, and our, our users are seeing that performance problem, and we have to roll back. It's uh, very stressful and takes a lot of time out of the operations engineers. Also, we have some pools which uh, actually require we take the site down for, uh, to modify the pools. Uh, so we'll make a, a, a downtime post, and then our users will complain staunchly. And then, as you see from this graph here, uh, the, the green is all the, the requests that have gone through correctly to the user. Uh, then you see the downtime, and then a big blob of red. And that red is the cache heating up. Now, it's only a problem for five minutes here. Still, that's it's pretty bad. It's, users are seeing errors, not content. But really, that reheat time is lasts on the order of days. Uh, 16 hours later, that cache is still reheating. And during that time, uh, we're experiencing slow page load times and occasional random errors. So in comes McRouter. Now, Reddit's infrastructure is radically different from Facebook. But you'll see this hastily made graph also kind of looks like the Facebook social graph. Uh, in the end, our cache problem is exactly the same. So to integrate McRouter into our setup, we're all in Ubuntu 12.04. So we built packages for uh, McRouter and all the dependencies, which will be on our Launchpad PPA later on today. We use Zookeeper to sync across all of our app servers. And we're currently testing in one production cluster that's only running 4,200 operations per second. But we're going to test, uh, we're going to expand that to another cluster, which does two orders of magnitudes more. And in those cl two clusters, we're immediately able to take, take uh, use of automatic failover, connection pooling, and shadow testing to, to remove uh, the, the negative experience that people would see when, when we're trying, new out, trying out new instance types. Now, all this said, McRouter is not exactly a silver bullet. Uh, Reddit has done some horrible things to memcache in the past, as I'm sure all of you have. Uh, we use memcache to paper over asynchronous replication lag with our Postgres databases. What this means is that our apps need to see the same view of memcached all across the pool. And also, a single dead cache will kill the entire site and make my phone start buzzing incessantly. Uh, and for these pools, even updating with Zookeeper, there's still a small window of opportunity to introduce data corruption. Um, so we need to change our code to fix that. Also, uh, prior to McRouter, we were using the binary protocol. Uh, it's not as well supported, so we just did a trivial switch in our code to change that to ASCII. And also, uh, we did not plan for our keys to be prefixed routed. Uh, it's a great idea. Wish we had thought of it. It would have made this a whole lot simpler. <laughs> But in the future, we're going to leverage McRouter to easily test new instance types without anybody knowing. Uh, it's going to work great and seamless. Um, we'll also be able to replace servers with no downtime. Our app code does need changes to, to, make, to get the best use out of McRouter, but that's actually great, because we're actually offloading complexity from our app into McRouter. And at the end, we'll be able to implement leases and gutter pools and use the embedded client and get significant performance enhancements. So just to, <laughs> just to summarize, McRouter is a memcache protocol router for scaling memcached deployments, and it's open source today. So please don't take our word for it. So <laughs> with that, um, I'm happy to take, I guess, one question from the audience. <laughs> I'll be outside so you can talk to me as much as you want afterwards.
Uh, oh, you can yeah, come to the mic, mic, please. Um, how would you compare McRouter with Twin Proxy? Yes. Um, so that's a great question. So Twin Proxy is much more of just the uh, kind of a proxy type of thing. We have a lot more routing type features in McRouter that are designed to uh, do stuff like cold cache warmup, for example, which is to say that I have a cold box here. I'm going to automatically fetch data from a, a replica that might have some warm data and install it back into a cold box, right? So that's a routing type of feature. So there's a lot of different specific features that are not just about connection pooling and stuff like that. It's more about routing. And it also has composable routing, which means you can build all these different things together. So that's, uh, I think, where we differentiate ourselves between Twin Proxy. And, and the cold cache warm-up is really critical to making sure that there's no downtime while we're switching out caches. One more. I have one question. Yeah. Uh, in Reddit, have you considered data replication in memcache? In uh, we have. It, it doesn't exactly help our particular use case, mostly because of our, our app code problems. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's not going to get us all the way there. <laughs> In case one cache box is down, you can fall back to the other one, kind of. Scenario. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit more intricate than that. We we've really abused memcache. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you very much. We'll be outside after, so if you have any more questions. Thank you.